So now let's look at a switch structure. A strict structure is also a branch control structure. However, in a switch, you have the keyword switch and then your expression here. And in brackets here, we have the different values in which the expression can yield. And depending upon that, you'll have certain statements, statement or statements, depending upon whether or not you used a compound statement. for each particular case. Notice here that you have break, break. What the break does is if it meets, if it meets a particular value, it breaks out of the switch. Okay, without the break, you would actually go on to the next case. Okay, without the break, you would go on to the next case and uh, there would be another evaluation. So with the break, you automatically break out of the switch. Let's look at an example. Okay, we're going to determine the percentage Gryffindor wins the Quidditch match using a simple switch. So we're looking at the exact same scenario as we were looking at before with Harry. Uh, except instead of using a nested if statement, now we're going to use a simple switch. So here we say pound include IO stream, that's for our input output preprocess directive using namespace standard, int main, int broomstick, just like before, C out, one for Nimbus 2000, two for Nimbus 2001, three for Firebolt, C in broomstick. And now this time, we're going to see used keyword switch broomstick is our expression and a broomstick is a one which is case one integer data type broomstick broomstick case one okay C out Gryffindor has at least a 90 79 percent chance of winning break otherwise two with the Nimbus 2001 has an 89 percent chance or case three, if the user entered a three into broomstick, Gryffindor has at least a 99% chance of winning break. And if the user doesn't enter one, two, or three, there's a default. You entered an incorrect broomstick choice. System pause, return zero. Let's go ahead and run this. So how about the Nimbus 2001? 89% chance. The firebolt. 99% chance. And of course, let's enter in a dud. You didn't entered an incorrect broomstick choice. All right, let's look at it, another example. Determine the percentage Gryffindor wins the Quidditch match using an if else logical expressions, relational operators, logical operators, and nesting. So here we're going to say pound include IO stream using namespace standard, int main. This time we have an int shape. See how it's enter an integer from 1 to 10 describing Harry's physical shape, with 10 being the highest. See in shape, see out NL. And then we, we're already familiar with broomstick. So here, if shape is less than equals to seven and shape is less than eight, we have our here, our logical operators. All right, with our logical expressions, one logical expression, two logical expressions, all right, which we take the logical values of by using a logical operator, in this case, and. All right, so if Harry's in a 1 to 10, at least a 7, okay, 
but you know less than an eight then if broomstick is one Gryffindor has a 70% chance of winning if it's two 80% chance else if three 90% chance else you entered in the incorrect broomstick choice we have another scenario and this is in within a compound statement here all within this one if statement here all right and be careful when you're indenting sometimes indents can mess up the fact that the else looks for the next higher if and if you indented and forgot your brackets you might get into some trouble so if else if else if else if else that's our big nested f and then within those nested is we have even more so now else if shape is eight okay then um harry could be what broomstick one seventy five percent eighty five percent and ninety five percent else you ended in the incorrect broomstick now if he's close to nine or at nine 79 89 and 99 and if he's at a 10 79.9 89.9 and Gryffindor has a 99.9% .9 chance of winning if Harry's shape is a 10 and he chooses the fire boat for his broomstick all right and then the final L says you entered an incorrect integer for Harry's shape rather than just a broomstick in the preceding ones all right, so in essence, if Harry's from 0 to 7 or 1 to 7 in physical shape, he's here. And then as each one progresses, he has a higher chance of helping Gryffindor win. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so in this case, let's just say give him a 5 for being in shape. And he chooses the fire boat. So he has a 90% chance of winning. Let's go ahead and choose 10 this time. And he chooses the fire boat. He's a 99.9% .9 chance of winning. Let's start picking some wrong values. Let's pick 12 and 2. You need to incorrect Harry's shape. And then this time, let's enter in 8, which is a good value, but 5, enter in an incorrect broomstick choice. Here we're doing the exact same thing with the nested if statement, but now we're going to use a nested switch statement. We're just simply showing you how we can write the exact, create the exact same outcome just using a different branch control structure. Instead of if statements, we're going to use a switch structure. So in this case, just like before, pound include idle stream using namespace standard and main and shape and broomstick, allowing for you to enter in your values. And this time we're going to say switch shape case one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because remember from zero to, or one to seven, it all counts the same in terms of Harry's shape. And now we nested in, <laughs> we nested in another switch here. Switch broomstick, case one, case two, case three. Default, you enter in the incorrect. See here out in each of the cases we're breaking out of it. Here there's no breaks, so C is just gonna go in and read case, read go in and read case, case after case. So if it was case two, it would break out. Okay, uh, if it's not case seven, then you have case eight. All right, and it's three different cases case nine, case 10. And whoops, that should be point nine for case 10. There we go. And then uh, default C out, system pause, return.
one, actually. Yeah, okay, I thought I forgot this one. So there's the break. There's the break here. Because if it fell into case nine, you want to break out. You don't want to roll back into case 10. And then the final default, which is outside of the nested switch, is you entered incorrect integer for Harry's shape rather than just for the broomstick. So let's go ahead and run this. So let's say Harry's in excellent shape and he chooses the fire bolts. Same as before. Let's say Harry's not in good shape. Chooses the Nimbus 2000. 70% chance of winning. Let's go ahead and pick a bad number. Zero. Harry's shape. Okay, because that's where our bad value came into. And then, of course, something good here, but something bad here. You entered in an incorrect, incorrect broomstick choice. Avoiding bugs. The very first thing we want to do to avoid bugs is know our semicolon placement. Okay, so if you see here in a one-way selection, you have if a particular expression and then statement. Sometimes by accident you can put your semicolon up here. Ouch. If you do that, then it's over. Um, basically, it'll read this and then it'll immediately automatically run that statement. So be aware of that. Uh, the next thing we have are relational operators. Remember our relational operators over here? Okay, uh, for instance, let's say ba -boom. we have an example here. Zero is less than equal to a number which is less than equal to three. What are the different values that number can be? If you think about it, uh, maybe just, you know, like zero, one, two, three. Be careful if that's what you thought. Here's why. Zero is less than equal to, let's say number was 10, less than equal to three. If we look at this, C++ is going to evaluate, if you recall, from left to right. So it's going to look at 0 less than equal to 10, which is true. And true is equivalent to 1, in which 1 is less than equals to 3, which is true again. So be careful, be careful. A better way to write it so that you would get that zero, one, two, three would be to say something like zero less than equal to number. And then an number less than equals to three using our logical operators. Else if and indenting, uh, a lot of times, like when you see here, when you have these nested ifs, etc., uh, you're like, yeah, well, this if statement, this expression goes with this particular else, this else goes with this particular if. Sometimes you can space and indent things out so that it looks that way, but you maybe have forgotten an else somewhere or an if somewhere. And what happens is C++ will look, in terms of the else, it will look and work with the next if statement looking up. So be aware of that. Errors can occur because of that. Uh, equality and assignment operator. This is our equality operator. All right. 
and this is the assignment operator. So with the Harry example, we were using the equality operator to see which broomstick you picked, which is different from the assignment operator because then it would assign okay, that particular value to a variable. And then we also have the break statement with our switch structure. If you forget the break here, again, case value one, even if this was the case, case value two will still be evaluated. All right, and sometimes it may still work out for you, but sometimes it may not. It just depends upon the circumstances of your code. If you recall from the break statement that I wrote or the contr switch control statement that I wrote, um, I purposely left out break because in that particular circumstance, I wanted those values to be included. All right, so in review, we talked about selection control. All right, the computer processes the program either using sequencing and or actually sequence, selectivity, and of course, uh, repetition. And we talked about selection in this particular lesson. We, we first incorporate our building blocks in selection control, which are our logical expressions, all right, which use relational operators to find the value of our logical expressions. And if we have two logical expressions, two or more, we'll need to use logical operators or Boolean operators to determine what our final value will be. Just like before, you have an order of precedence when working with logical operators, like you would with plus or minus or multiply. You have your short circuit evaluation, which says, hey, I'm going to read from left to right. And if I'm already going to determine, you know, if I'm using or and I already have one true, then I don't need to read the rest. Not necessary. We talked about branch control structures using an if statement and the different ways to use an if statement. The different ways to use multiple selection in, in terms of a nested if statement. And of course, the switch structure, which allows us to have something close to a nested if statement, allowing us for multiple selections. And if we want more than one line or one statement within our uh, outcome of a particular expression, we can use what are known as compound statements. And finally, we talked about bugs. Be careful because these bugs will give you results. if you're not careful that you don't want, even though the code compiles and runs. That is selection control.